What? What? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Could you do me a favor and try moving this mic back sure. a little bit? Because I think it's between that mic and mine that's causing the feedback. That's my latest theory. Cooperative effort. 
And then I will look at the apartments. I've had complaints before about the apartments and their garbage, and that's why I was wondering if it was from the tenants or from the dumpsters blowing it out. I don't think it's from the dumpsters. I think it's more mainly from the tenants because I'm right in front of them. And, you know, I work a lot. My wife all the time is cleaning up the yard, you know, on her case, you know, try to clean up, you know, just keep up our area clean. And the apartments, you know, they throw garbage out there, they blow winds right into my ditch. So I'm constantly picking up garbage. So I do what I can to keep the area clean. So I would like for the Hainesville public works to just do their part, you know. I mean, I've been living there for the last eight, nine years, and I think I've seen a Hainesville truck cleaning only once. I mean, I seen Ron Lake doing it a lot. Oh, I know we've been over there because we do road, we've done road repair over there. Uh, I stop in and talk to the business, stop and save, you know, classic burnery. I talk to our businesses quite a bit over yeah. there. No, no, I don't say you guys haven't been there, but I mean, as far as Ron Lake people, when I'm off work, I see those guys driving back and forth a lot, cleaning up. But there's always our section, it doesn't get picked up. I mean, and they, that, you know, it bothers me a lot because, you know, I have kids growing up, and quite often, you know, I've been telling my wife, you know, I think I want to put my house for sale in a while because, you know, instead of getting better, it's getting worse. So, you know. All right, well, your comment is noted, and we will gladly look into that. I will make a note to take an uh, extra drive over there. Our police chief is here, so I'm sure he'll pass on to the staff what we can. It's hard, though, to catch oh. people that throw garbage out oh, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, they're not right there when they're driving yeah. by. We have it happening uh, by my house. I'm on a corner a lot, and I'm shocked at what I find out in the street sometimes. Yeah, okay. yeah, you know, it, it, it's upsetting, you know, it's because, like I said, I'm right in the corner. Sometimes, like, you know, someday I was raking my leaves, I found beer bottles in my yard. And, like, obviously, some trunk was by this out the window, because that's not something that wind's gonna blow into my yard. And it really upsets me, you know, if I catch somebody, I'm like, I'm gonna call the cops, and I'm probably gonna call the cops, don't let them blow <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's really upsetting, you know. Is it head on that one street light, which is ours, is that going to be replaced with the rest of the villages? Uh, replace our other street lights? I believe so. Yeah. So, if, if, wrong. <laughs> if, if what I think is going to happen, we're replacing the heads of the street lights throughout the village. So the one on your street that belongs to Hainesville will have a brighter and newer light on it. So it might help a little bit. At least, with that, yes. at least with that part of your concern. Yeah, good. Because uh, even, you know, what I did is I installed a fog light. Well, I shouldn't say fog light. I don't know how you call it, but a uh, sensor light. To see more light. Yeah, yeah, secure light. When people go by, you know, you, it's like, you know, it's the part of the street. Because honestly, I think probably in the middle of the night, probably kids go and do a stop there. Like I said, you know, I found dirty stuff there, you know. Yeah. It's not pleasant. So, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, any other takers on public comments at this time? <coughs> okay, next item up is on the bus vote agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Trustees Daranowski. Aye. Priest. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Barrett. Aye. Daly. Aye. And Walkington. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, Sunday was trick or treating in Haynesville. We had awesome weather this weekend. Uh, it was a lovely day, a lot of people out. Uh, our hay rides were a big success. I was out there with my son, Christopher, and we saw a lot of residents and uh, got in a, a couple nice emails and even a few pictures of the hay ride going around. So people seemed to really enjoy that. And the police were out, uh, numerous uh, vehicles were out. So they certainly were noticed as being in town and keeping us safe. Um, also, just want to add, uh, as you know, I, I made an announcement, uh, and it's been on our website. I made it in the last board meeting. It's in our recent newsletter. Uh, I received Trustee Walkington's uh, letter of resignation. Uh, sadly, he'll be moving out of our village limits, um, but he's going to be close enough to pop back and keep an eye on us, he promises. Um, but that being said, I've been seeking letters of interest of those who would like to be considered being appointed by me uh, for the remainder of his term. 
Uh, if you would want to stay as trustee, because that term does expire in the spring, you would also need to see the clerk, Kathy Messler, or the deputy clerk, Roseanne Stark, and pick up a packet, uh, which would have to be turned in by December 22nd, uh, so you could be on the spring ballot, because that would be the spring election of 2015. Uh, as of today, I have received seven letters. Uh, one letter I received uh, just this morning. Uh, so I got a good response uh, so far, a variety of letters. So uh, uh, I have asked for letters to be sent in uh, no later than November 3rd. And I'm looking to make an announcement at the November 11th board meeting, which will be Trustee Walkington's last board meeting. And we're going to have quite a send-off for him. And of course, there'll be cake. So we hope you will all be in attendance. And it'll be Gary's favorite photo this time. I'm not going to tell him what it is, Gary. Right? <laughs> <I'm just laughing. laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, Jeff Gailey, our public works superintendent, uh, left this afternoon to head to the IFA Man uh, conference and seminar. He's taking some classes there. That is the uh, Illinois Public Works Mutual Aid Organization. Uh, we opted not to send him to EMA this year, but he's actually getting double duty at this public aid conference because they are doing quite a few different uh, EMA cert certification. Uh, classes and exercises, and Dave Christensen, the head of the Lake County EMA, is teaching several of those, so um, very worthwhile in attending that. Uh, the street resurfacing project is almost completed. Uh, the main issue to be done is the final resurfacing of Whitetail, uh, striping intersections in both Cranberry Lake subdivisions, and there's still some driveway apron replacements. Um, Everything's looking very good. We're, we haven't done final inspections, so if you've noticed anything you're at all concerned about it, please let me know, <coughs> and we'll make sure it gets on the engineer's list. Um, also, Jeff and I continue to be in contact with the 360 Energy Group, working on the DECA grant for our fixture, moving forward to get our uh, street lights. Uh, any money we can get from that grant to help us offset the cost is going to be very beneficial. Um, the new flow meter was installed in the Cranberry Lake lift station, and uh, Terry Brown has reported that that's working beautifully. Uh, J&P Nursery, uh, you know, everybody's anxiously awaiting the trees to be installed. We followed up with them, and they are still waiting for some locates to get done and planting. They have assured us should begin by mid next week. Um, also, uh, there's a home in Round Lake Park that has their sump pump line still discharging on the walking path on the west side of the lake. I have called the village of Round Lake and asked them to follow up with the homeowner. And uh, today or yesterday, Jeff also sent them a letter, so we'll have to take further action if that doesn't get addressed. And then finally, uh, just to announce, Jeff has finished setting up everything at the Public Works Building for our new tenant, uh, which we're very excited about, the Lake of McHenry Fire Department Special Response Team. Um, so they are scheduled to move in this Saturday. So that's all I have. Are there any reports from any of the standing committees? Uh, yes, just one. Okay. Uh, First of all, I'd like to thank the residents for their responses on, the, uh, on our request on the, in the newsletter about the tall oaks and Painesville Road crossing, pedestrian crossing. Got a lot of good feedback from, from the residents, and, uh, and it made us open up our eyes. And we've had a meeting tonight with the chief and the mayor and, uh, and public work, I mean, public safety committee uh, in regards to this on how we can better, uh, how would you say, make this intersection more. Uh, have more basically recognized pedestrians in there with either new signage contacting Lake County. Uh, Police Chief was also mentioned about uh, maybe reducing speed limits. That would also, uh, and the mayor has been uh, very, uh, uh, very active in trying to get this done on Haynesville Road because of the fact of going from 40 to 30 to 35 in, in Round Lake and Round Lake Park, uh, Beach. There's other issues also that we were talking about, which was. Uh, guardrails 
by the townhomes because of the recent accidents that we've had about the DUIs leaving the, uh, leaving the road and almost hitting the gas mains and also in one case they also did hit the gas main. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we'll be contacting Lake County Department of Transportation with, letters, mayor and police chief are very uh, sending to them. And uh, so just try to make this street basically a little bit sick for our And so, some of the communications have been made, uh, but we, we have to provide some additional information or go some other routes on South Avenue. So I just want to make that clear. Wetlands and open space. Um, we are having our first annual great acorn hunt on the 15th of November from 10 to noon. And um, any children under 10 need to be accompanied by adults. And we're meeting over at the corner of Tall Oak and Haynesville Road. Wear shoes that can get dirty. And um, it should be fun. Sounds like a funny idea. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that folks uh, cooperate and drop their acorns by then. And the squirrels haven't stolen them all, right? <laughs> Are they? Boy. Okay, well, let's, we'll find out. They don't keep business. <laughs> okay, any other standing committee reports? All right, let's move on to business. We have only one item up. This is a continuation uh, on the Heritage Tree uh, Preservation Ordinance Passability. This is a discussion topic only tonight. We're not adapting anything. Uh, this was brought up at the last meeting. We have a lot of different opinions and views, which is a good thing. That's why we're a board. That's what we're supposed to be. Uh, and based on that, uh, I went and got some additional information with the help of our clerk. And so hopefully everybody's read through their packet. And I guess the first question uh, I would like to ask the trustees is, if you notice, and, and I didn't put in every single town because we got a lot of replies, which is a good thing. I try to put in most of the towns that are in Central Lake County and or at least Lake County. And a lot of them do have some type of ordinance protecting heritage trees, whether it's just a species or several species. Some uh, have exempt for residential, individual residential lots, which is one of the things we discussed. So I'm wondering, number one, has that changed um, the views of any of the trustees, or is there still concerns that we should, should just be even looking at this? Is that a fair question? My biggest concern was the red, private residential. Okay. That was that was my huge concern. Yeah. Because okay. you know I, just, I you know that's it. and I'm all for on commercial land if they want to cut down a tree like. Because I think that's even in our comprehensive plan, isn't it? If they take a tree down, they have to put so many of uh, this type or that type. Well, of yes and no. There's development plans that are, you know, for a landscaping plan. Where you get in the mind is if there's vacant land that has been sitting a long time, and now, all right, I'm going to sell this vacant land. If I decide that I want to cut down all the trees, to make it, in my mind, I think that that's beneficial to show, look at how all the land you have to work with for commercial property or some type of development, and there's no trees in your way. And there are people of that mindset. Um, and that's actually an incident that I believe happened in Round Lake Park that actually forced, not forced them, but I think residents, you know, people were greatly concerned, and that is why they adopted the ordinance, because that's exactly what happened in Rock Lake Park, is there was a lot that everything was cut down, and then the development never occurred. So while a lot of things are growing back, the big trees will not be back. So. And you know, so that's the, that's, you have loopholes here. It doesn't really cover everything necessarily. My take on that was about the same as, as, as uh, Jaranowski's here, uh, which was the fact that, you know, on a, on a private property, it's one thing, not commercial property, it's one thing. Because I'm not, you know, if I don't like trees, and you're saying that I can't do what I 
needs to own my property, you know, then what did I buy it for? And especially now that we don't have the ordinance right now in place, and I own it, and all of a sudden I can't do anything with it, you guys just change the ordinance. That just kind of just, it just seems like we're, we're governing, you know, within a person's a person's personal Well, and that's, that's why I asked the question, I did ask the question at the meeting, is if residential property was individual, right, not a subdivision, although right. they don't have any land for a subdivision, but we would not target an individual right. residential right. lot necessarily. There are very few lots that have heritage trees yeah. anyway. But there has been one or two, and I think it's tall oak that has some of them. But even, and even if they don't have heritage trees now, we're going to assume that this subdivision in Hain the village of Haynesville will continue, and um, the trees that are in people's yards are going to grow and be big trees 50 or 100 years or whatever. I mean, now I have, I don't know, 12, 15 foot blue spruce that I sure wouldn't want somebody to cut down just because they're going to buy my house. But um, I just wanted to speak to the um, other issue. I just spent the weekend in Galena, and Galena, the whole um, downtown, or the whole city, I think, is considered a national uh, preservation area. And so if anybody wants to paint their house, they have to get permission, and they have to follow a certain <coughs> colors that are conducive to stay in the uh, period of the time. So there are lots of precedents where um, homeowners have restrictions on what they can do. Sure, but, they, but they, nobody's they, saying, nobody's they saying hate well is. They, they yeah. bought it knowing that they Deer, bought Deer it. Point <coughs> Trails is not going to be a preservation area. I'm sorry? Deer Point Trails is not going to be a preservation area. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in I grew up in New Jersey in Cape May, and because I'm sure you're aware of it, is, is gorgeous, and they have painting ladies, and San Francisco has stuff like that. I mean, that's that's entirely different situations. People buy into knowing that that they have to get their house colors approved through their preservation society. We have no such society. I think we're digressing way yeah. too much. Yeah. The, the topic here is trees, and the question is. Um, are we going to limit this to a species, whether it's the oak, several species? Um, are we going to pursue all? I, I personally would be against pursuing all, but that's why we're having a discussion tonight. Jerry, just just as a point of discussion, initially when this came up, I know we were concerned. I mean, the areas that have these trees right now are just here west on 120. And, and south of 122. South of 122, yes. And I'm thinking, you know, it would be great to preserve these, but then you and I both looked at the map for the 53 extension and the loops over, and unless I'm reading it wrong, that right away is just going to go right through these two groves, or at least the one grove south of 120 over here. So I'm reluctant to make an ordinance that would affect those trees right now when I think they're going to end up getting run over by vehicles. And I support John and Wally in the stance of, I don't want to start putting restrictions on people's private property. Commercial property, I'd have an easier time. Um, just to uh, add a note on the property about 53120, uh, actually there was a land use committee uh, last Thursday and the items that were reviewed were maps for the route showing what are called hot and cold spots. And that has to do with future economic, uh, economic development. It has to do with uh, highly sensitive areas uh, such as wetlands, woodlands. And of course, you know this whole issue started from the Lake County Blue Ribbon Advisory Council. And so you had quite a few environmentalists uh, involved in that. So um, I don't know that, that all those trees would be cut down so readily. The question is whether they'll still be there by the time they start building. Will we be here? Now, I also did talk to the property owner of the, the parcel that you're uh, talking about, Jerry. 
Uh, I think I told you I, I talked to him about a week ago mm -hmm. um, because the, the property is for sale and he was inquiring about the price, which there's nothing that the village is going to spend money on. I did talk to him again and um, he is willing to divide the property and sell, you know, a 10 acre parcel. It's just under 30, it's 29.7 or 29.6 acres. Um, that would include the outgrowth, but I don't know that the village is in a position to spend that kind of money for that land. And as you said, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, but that is not the only area. I mean, that is an area that was a red flag to me when the for sale sign went up. We also have to take into account the North Brook Sports Club. Is there anything going on there that's going to change right now? Do they have any plans? No. Does that mean that the North Brook Sports Club can be put up for sale for three years or somebody could come in five years and make them an offer they couldn't refuse? Remember, they're called the North Brook Sports Club because they used to be in North Brook. And they moved because guess what happened in North Brook? It got to go. So I'm just saying there's you know no guarantees, and there's certainly while they're very supportive of preserving that land, you know you need to think of what's to come. And if a development came in, yes, we do have some control, and there's landscaping plans, but there is some loopholes unless we do something like this that gives them a window of opportunity to clear that land. Questions asked. Is there, now that the, the Oak Grove property is for sale, if we were to write an ordinance soon, would it still apply to that property? Jim? It depends on how we write it. We, we can write the ordinance to essentially grandfather in certain properties. Um, you can write the ordinance. Pretty much, I mean, there's a good amount of flexibility in how we would do that. Uh, so that would be up to the board. It's a policy decision. Legally, you can do it either way. What what happens if he come, if somebody buys it, they come in and uh, they want to rezone commercial? You're gonna deny him that development development because it has trees on. No, I I think what I touched on at the last meeting is. It prevents them from cutting down the trees immediately with no questions asked. Right. And certainly if somebody comes forward with a development that's beneficial to the village and it follows all our other zoning codes, we wouldn't deny them. But we now are in a position to have trade-offs or it depends what we write in the policy. Are we going to allow them to take down five trees because you know, it's interesting. Some developers will look at that property and say, oh my God, those trees, I love them. They're going to help the look at what I'm trying to accomplish. They feel it adds value to their land. It adds value to their business. There's others who don't, don't look at it that way. So, you know, it's just like when Cranberry Lake was built. Everybody think Cranberry Lake, you know, subdivision is beautiful now, and it is. But there were trees taken down. Don't make any mistake, there were big trees taken down. And the only thing that would have prevented that would have been to say there was no development at all. You know, we let development occur, we saved as many trees as we could, and as John mentioned earlier, yes, they had to put back other things as well. Yeah, so. I have a suggestion then, Linda. Yes. We're, we're talking oh. generalities here, not more of a specific. If we could have a proposed ordinance to work on, to look at and work on. Well, in my memo and in the ordinances I included, um, I like, I really kind of favor the one from Richmond more so by far. I saw that. Um, I think we might want to add a little bit more meat to it. Uh, Jim just said he has a comment. So just, I'm well, just, uh, just exactly on that point, if you take a look, one of the discussions that's occurred tonight is. A discussion, a concern about regulating people in single-family or multi-family dwellings. And if you look at 6.6.2, I'm looking at the Richmond ordinance that, um, that you discussed, and it's 6.6.2 in the 
first paragraph, it says, nothing in this section shall apply to tree removal by an owner of a lot having a single family, two family, or duplex dwelling located thereon. So that's an example of the way you can address that concern. If, the, if that's the concern, that language takes care of it right there. If there are other concerns, it can be crafted to address those concerns. If that the board agrees that you want to have such an ordinance. But those, you know, just to, to, to give you a very specific example of how you can do that, that language exempts those kinds of properties, and so you're not then telling somebody who has a single family house that they can't cut down a tree on their lot. Well, do we then want to take the Richmond uh, ordinance as a starting point, comment on it, and submit oh. that to you, Linda? Or a compilation? Um, that would be outstanding. And, you know, keep in mind, you know, one of the things you have to keep in mind is what species we're going to focus on. Are we going to keep it to oaks? Are we going to expand on that? And also, what is the size <coughs> caliber of a tree? And we have that wonderful term. Uh, <laughs> to say Later than the earlier the better. 
The other thing that I didn't see in either ordinance is that we should have some pretty strict fines for people who, if we're going to have permits, and if they don't get a permit and they just do it, that it, there should be a pretty strict fine, stiff fine for, for Well, what I said do residential properties. Well, but even just, even just, just commercial, I'm saying. I mean, if, so if we adopt this ordinance and that property owner went ahead and cut down the trees, what is the ramification, is what she's saying. Yeah, but. How are they fine? Are we, we need to pull permits for cutting down trees right now within the residential, right? No. 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 Okay. And we wouldn't be asking that in the future either. Okay, so well, I'm it sounds that's the way the board wants to go. Now yeah. we'll see what comments come back, but it sounds like we're steering away from the, the individual residential well, just, lots. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. Why not? Why be able to Now, I, the only reason, the only way I would be actually for a permit purpose is if we set a standard for a tree size specifically because I had a dead tree with my friend Harold. It was easy enough to take down because it was tiny, it wasn't that big. But if you're talking like a huge tree, that's something that like an individual person for the most part wouldn't do on their own. They would have a company come and do it. Maybe if we had a tree and put it into the ordinance like a tree of a certain size. We would have to have a permit done just so that we can make sure that they have a proper safety or the standards in place. You see what I'm saying? Take a look at what's here and tell what you think. Yeah. Does that make everything we well, do that? That's, well, then that would go back to what we were originally proposing. I, at the last meeting, I was saying pick a size. If, if uh, the tree is 18 inches caliper or more. But that's where you were defining the heritage. Yeah, right. yeah. Heritage tree just means it's an old tree. It's it's our heritage because it's a tree has got to be fifty years old, hundred years old. Right. Richmond almost covers all of that. Reason for tree removal, license required. But you know what I'm saying, John? If you said you didn't want to dictate. No, no, no. no. Because in your letter, in your cover letter, it said restricting the cutting down of trees on private property. Oh, so you're saying they still can cut it down. They can still cut it down, but they should get a safety permit so that we can say, okay, you know, you... you now, have, here's the catcher. Who's going to do that paperwork? Who's going to go inspect the tree? And who's going to go, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just I saying... I don't know. That's why I'm really asking you that. Yeah. Because now you've created a job. Because that's not something that the Lake County Building Department's going to do. Angel Forestry Service. Jeff won't be doing that unless we're going to hire somebody else from public works. Isn't that an agreement with the police? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. We'll hire Gary to do it. Gary. <laughs> tonight, we agree that if everybody focuses on the Richmond ordinance, this is a real good start for us. I think it addresses a lot of what we've heard in the past and tonight. If there's no other new thoughts, I'm going to ask for a motion for a All in favor? Aye. Aye. 